Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today I thought I would just record a quick Vietis tutorial. So for those of you who aren't aware, Vietis is an external tool for VATSIM controllers to use. Basically records the ATIS for you, or synthesizes an ATIS from text for you. It does a pretty good job of it. Um, again, I'm using version 3.2.0.0 in this tutorial. If this version updates, obviously parts of this tutorial may go out of date. Today we're controlling at Victoria, we're logged in as Victoria Tower, so that's where we'll be setting up our ATIS. Now when you first start up the ATIS, obviously this um, dialog here is going to be blank, you're not going to have any facilities listed. So we're going to go ahead and create a new facility by clicking new. So I know you guys can't see it because my display isn't working properly, but it prompts you to enter a new facility identifier. So this is the IKO identifier, so in our case that's Charlie, Yankee, Yankee, Juliet, hit the OK button. Then the facility's name, in this case I'm just going to call it Victoria International, and then we're going to hit the OK button. Now you'll see it pop up in your dialog box. You can export this facility for later use, you can import it or import an existing facility from say another device or something like that if you wanted. Um, but for now we're going to double click on Victoria International here and uh, that's going to open up another dialog here. Alright so you'll see it'll open up a dialog somewhat like this here. Again I apologize for my recording it's not super great something's wrong with Streamlabs at the moment I don't know what but if you see uh, my mouse ghosts spazzing out on the side of the V8 box here I apologize. Anyway we're going to go ahead and set up the ATIS. So also my mouse is out of sync so I will be a little bit below and off to the left of where you're actually seeing my mouse here uh, on the display again some I don't know what the error is here but the first thing we're gonna do is hit control s and check our settings um, you'll see your name again I know you guys can't see this in the video which uh, I apologize for again but you'll see an option to put in your name your CID and your password your rating in your server. You can also select an option to hide the ATIS update notification, keep the VATIS window visible, and automatically check for updates. Uh, again, you need to enter your VATSIM credentials to actually connect to VATSIM, so make sure you do that on the first time you're connecting to a VATSIM using VATIS. Alright, um, so I have all that set up. I don't need to enter any of that. For now, we're going to go back to this window here, and we're going to hit Control F. So this brings up the facility configuration. All right, there we go. So as you guys can see, this is the facility configuration area. Again, my mouse isn't actually where my mouse is, so where you guys are seeing the mouse is a little bit to the right of where my actual mouse is. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit New Profile once you get up to this screen. So clicking on New Profile, we can enter a uh, name for the facility profile. In this case, I'm just going to call this uh, 09 because that's the active runway currently. At least I believe so. Actually, you know what? The ATIS just recently updated. Um, let's see. Yeah, runway 09 is still the best runway here. So we're going to use runway 09. Uh, after we have that uh, name, we're just going to hit OK. I know you guys can't see this. Uh, but just trust me, it'll ask you for a facility name once you hit the new profile button. So then you just enter a name, hit OK, uh, and that'll automatically save that profile. First thing we're going to go over is to the configuration uh, tab up here. Click on that. So the first checkbox you see is use official Mater observation time. Once again, my mouse is in the wrong location, so it looks like I'm over the add button. My mouse is actually over the use official Mater observation time checkbox. So if you were to check that, this by default, by the way, is zero. Um, if you check that, it'll stagger the ATIS um, by that many minutes past the hour. So if you put in 20, for example, you would get your ATIS 20 minutes past the hour, which can be useful because I believe that sim uh, staggers its ATIS by 20 minutes. So I don't like to use that, actually. I just like to leave that unchecked and get the live ATIS update. So the next thing you're going to see is the magnetic variation. Okay, so by the way, when you come down to this next box, the default is set to none. I just had it set to subtract 20 before, but by default it's set to none. So this is the magnetic variation of the winds. So the Madar comes in true north, and when the ATIS comes through for pilots, we want that to be in magnetic heading, because the runways are in magnetic heading. So, or at least the charts are all published in magnetic heading, I should say. 
So here at Victoria, we're going to subtract 20 degrees from the true heading to get the correct magnetic heading. Um, there's just a 20 degree magnetic radiation approximately. You can find all this information on your local charts for whichever airport you're controlling at. Uh, so you can add or you can use none if uh, your magnetic variation is zero. Um, then the next thing is the international ATIS format. So this is pretty straightforward. It would use the international ATIS format for the text parsing if you use this. Um, voice recorded ATIS is if you want to record uh, the ATIS manually. Um, if you wanted to leave it automated, just leave that unchecked. I'll do another tutorial sometime soon with the voice recorded ATIS. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and um, leave it unchecked because Victoria is an automatic ATIS. The next thing we can do is change the text to speech voice. Uh, it'll give you a bunch of options in the drop down. Uh, not all of them have the option to select between male and female, only certain ones do. I'm just going to leave it at English default. Alright, so then the next thing we're going to go to is the ATIS template button up here. And this is where we can see what the ATIS template is going to look like. So for example, we see uh, facility, uh, ATIS information, and the ATIS code. So this would be Victoria, and then it would say ATIS information, and then the ATIS code. So whatever the current ATIS code is, Oscar, Mike, uh, Juliet, whatever. Um, then we go over to the observation time, uh, so whatever the time that was observed that, it would give that. And then it would give you the weather string, so that's your winds, your altimeter, blah blah blah, clouds, whatnot, precipitation. Then airport conditions. So airport conditions are generally runways, um, but can be other things in there too. And finally it'll finish off with no dams. So we're just going to leave this as is because this is pretty standard for almost all airports you go to. They'll be in this format. So we won't have a problem. If you wanted to change this for whatever reason, for example, if you wanted to put the NODAMs in front of your airport conditions for whatever reason, you could just do that. Um, and you'd get your weather string, then your NODAMs, then your runways. Um, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it how it was. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the contractions page. And uh, this is where you could enter contractions. Um, so if you wanted uh, text-to-speech to say okay here so I'll just give you guys a common example the best example I can think of so by double clicking on find or replace you can edit that so our nav by default in Vietis is pronounced area navigation but we don't want it to say area navigation we want it to say uh, our nav we want it to pronounce oh, the shift key too long there our uh, boy, I cannot type. RNAV. So this is the pronunciation. You put the dash obviously for the syllables or for short breaks in between the word. Um, but yeah, you need to write it out how it's pronounced so that the text to speech engine would substitute RNAV for RNAV instead of area navigation now. So once we're happy with that, now once we're happy with configuration, contractions, and ATIS templates, uh, generally the only contraction I use is RNAV, but it's super, super easy to change the way words are said. Uh, makes that really easy. Uh, then we can hit the apply button and then OK. And you can see down here, whoa, I think just spazzed out. Give me one second, guys. Um, so if we go over to the VAS window again here, uh, you can see that the configuration profile is automatically selected in this box. If you were to click on that uh, 09 box right there, it would give you a drop down of all your configurations you have listed. Uh, right now we only have one so if you were to click on that it would just show you that one and it would on, and it automatically selects that one when you hit the control F and then uh, you make a new profile it will automatically select that profile that you just made alright so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the configure ATIS frequency so just by double clicking on that frequency we can select what frequency we want our ATIS to be on here at Victoria it's 118 decimal 80. I know you guys can't really see this actually. You know what? Give me one second and I'll fix that for you guys. I lied. I cannot fix that. So when you click on that, it'll actually just bring up a dialog box where you can select the current uh, frequency. Just so by hitting o selecting the frequency in there and hitting OK, you can see now it's changed to 118.800. All right. So the next thing we're going to go do is connect to VATSIM by clicking the connect button here. All right, so now we're connected to VATSIM. You see it automatically loads in the ATIS here. And um, if you go over, you guys can see in my Euroscope, it's automatically uh, brought up uh, Victoria ATIS. Oh, look at this. You know what? We have an aircraft on the ground. We may have to deal with that in between this tutorial. 
Anyways, um, so we're going to go ahead and just change this to Oscar to match the current real world ATIS. Nope. So by left clicking you can cycle forward through the alphabet, uh, right clicking will take you backwards through the alphabet. So I'm going to take Oscar. Uh, up at the top bar here we can see a few things real quick. We can see if the ATIS is transmitting at this time, which it is not. Uh, we can see the current time, see the current winds, and the current altimeter. So again, this box over here, uh, the first box is the current uh, winds, the weather string essentially. That's what will get right out to the pilots. But now we're going to enter the airport condition. So there's a full list of contractions that you can use, and I'll link to the, I'll put a link to those down below, the actual VATIS documentation. But I'm just going to put in the airport conditions here real quick. All right, so as you can see, what I said is the IFR approach, APPR stands for approach, is ILS or VIS, visual, runway 09, landing and departures, runway 09. Let's put a full stop there. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, nothing super fancy there. If you wanted to say, for whatever reason, we wanted to add runway 21, we could just say, or runway 21. Uh, if we had left and right, you just add R or L or even a C, and that would say left, right, left, center. Um, one thing to be important, if you didn't have run the RWY um, contraction in front of the runway there, and you just put 06L, it would say it exactly like that, 06L. It would not say 06 left. You need to have the text RWY 06L for it to say runway 06 left. Um, same thing with uh, taxiways. So for taxiways, you need to say taxiway uh, Victor. So that would say taxiway Victor. If you need to say Victor Alpha for something, I don't even know. Victor Alpha is not even a taxiway of Victoria, but you get the point. You need to have TWY to pronounce taxiways correctly. So a couple other text parsing rules that I forgot about is um, frequencies. So to get a frequency to display correctly in, or to sound correctly in your ATIS, uh, you have to type it in the proper megahertz format, so that would be, for example, one two two decimal eight zero zero, or eight zero, I believe, even works. But then that would read that correctly. Um, numbers be star, and then if you want to say minus, you put the minus sign there, and you can say minus two, and that's say minus two for whatever reason. If you need to say a minus, uh, airports, you put a plus before your airport, so that would make that plus Charlie Inky Victor Romeo. I feel bad for anyone listening to the ATIS right now. Um, they're going to be getting random stuff in their notices to Airman. Um, in the NAVAID section, uh, you could type plus Yankee Victor Romeo, and that would become uh, Vancouver, or it would actually read as Vancouver, which is the VOR name. So airports and VORs, you put a plus sign in front of numbers is a star, taxiways TWY, runways RWY. Other thing that you need to know is uh, if you want to say numbers correctly you want to put uh, an asterisk in front of it. So that would be asterisk say 4000. Um, so if you didn't have the asterisk I believe it would say 4000. If you want it to say it in proper IKO format it's or FAA format or whatever format it's asterisk uh, then the 4000. That'll pronounce it correctly. Alright, then moving on to the NODAM messages here. So if we wanted to say, for example, parallel or simultaneous parallel approaches in use, that would basically give you the airport conditions and it'd say notices to airmen simultaneous parallel approaches in use. Uh, right now we are not going to be using the NODAMs, so I'm just going to leave that blank. Good evening, Victoria Tower, uh, WestJet 425 is at the apron and ready to pick up clearance to Seattle. Alright, WestJet 425, you're cleared to Seattle via the Victoria 5 departure, flight plan route, expect to depart runway 09, squawk 5150. I love it when sticky keys turns on. While Sorry, you're still coming across a little uh, faint, probably like 2 out of 5, WestJet 425. 
Okay, we'll call you in a moment, Western Fortified. All right, let's see if we can get this up real quick. Uh, so once you're happy with your ATIS here, let's just get this up for this uh, aircraft. You can hit the TX ATIS button, so that'll uh, transmit your ATIS. We're going to do that now. And uh, is it working? Is it working? I think it's there. There we go. All right, so it's up. You can see the TX button turned red, and that indicates that our ATIS is up and we're good to go. All right, so something else I wanted to show you guys. If you click on airport conditions, for example, uh, let me see if I can. All right, so there we go. So if you click on, say, add new here, uh, we can type in a message. Oh, it's not coming through again. Give me one second, guys. Uh, we can, okay, so here we can type in a message if we want to just type in a message super quick. We can say, for example, um, the IFR approach, approach, approach is, uh, let's just say, R, or we'll just say ILS 09, ILS runway 09, correction. And then you just hit the OK button. Um, right. It's not going to work for me today for some reason. Uh, but anyway, you should see a list of your airport conditions that you put in here. Um, then by clicking the checkbox next to them, obviously it didn't go through for me. It's not working for some reason at the moment for me personally, but by clicking the checkbox here, uh, you can turn them yeah, on. Victoria Tower, Westjet 425 is ready to taxi, has information Oscar now. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, if you check these boxes, it'll automatically add that bit to the airport conditions menu. Um, the only catch here is that you have to turn off the transmit and then turn it back on for those changes to take effect. Um, same things with the NODAM. Click the node down here. Uh, let me just get rid of this because we use this being a pain. our Streamlabs is being a pain right now. If you click the node M's, it would bring up the same sort of menu, and you could do the same sort of thing there. Um, this is just quick access. So if you quickly wanted to say change runways for a configuration or change approaches, you could very easily do this by just hitting a checkbox, um, and it would add that preset uh, for you. If you ever wanted to, for whatever reason, change the facility you're at. Uh, close out the window and you could very and it would just take you back to that first page where you could select a new facility. Very straightforward, very easy. And WestJet 425 wind 010 at 5, runway 09, you're clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, WestJet 425, runway 09. Alright guys, well, I'll just about do it for this tutorial. If you like the video, don't uh, forget to leave a like, uh, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos, and have a good one. Cheers, guys.